Good morning. I am happy that the two sessions have been met today, uh, this session. And uh, being a private university and also taking up technical education, uh, it is very convenient for me. Well, what are the challenges facing technical education in particular and higher education in general? And what are our solutions? Being given very short time, I would like to mention that the expansion of higher education, particularly technical education, is the most important reform which the country requires. Because when we talk about reforms, I have seen all regulations, rules, pending bills, all of them aim at more controls and more centralization of power. I think we had already enough of this, and I would like the government to consider, be liberal, encourage competition, and through competition, we will achieve quality and cutting down the prices. That's what is happening in the economy. As far as expansion is concerned, there was a comparative study in the year 2010, which said that India's GER is 16%, whereas the world average is 27%. Countries, the emerging economies, for example, China has 26%, and Brazil has 36 percent. And some of the advanced countries, it varied from 50 percent to almost 100 percent. And what is it that we are doing to expand higher education and also technical education? In the last four years, not a single university was allowed, private university under the central government. That's why people went to states, and we have around 200 state private universities now. When colleges are more, we always find the media writing mushrooming of colleges. That may be true of three or four states. As a whole country, there is so much disparity. Take, for example, the South plus Maharashtra. Their population is one third of the country but these states control two-thirds of the educational institutions, both universities as well as colleges. So such a disparity exists, and disparities there are many things, gender-wise, rural versus urban, male versus female, state versus uh, state, etc. But as far as expansion is concerned, I would very much like that all those students who are eligible to enter into higher education must get a seat. Take, for example, the classic example is Delhi itself. We had more than one lakh applications for arts and science in Delhi, whereas we have only 50,000 seats available. And in one college, they did not entertain any application below 100%. This is true of even leading states like Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, or Karnataka. In professional courses, they begin with 100% in centum marks in plus 2 or class 12 and stop with mostly 95 or 90. In fact, there is a case pending in the Supreme Court now from Tamil Nadu. A few students who have secured 99% have gone to the court, approached the Supreme Court for getting a medical seat in the state. This is the kind of situation exists and wherever there is a shortage of a commodity, I was a minister for food sometime in Tamil Nadu. If there is a shortage, there will be hoarding, there will be dual pricing, there will be black marketing, and there will be corruption. That we should not allow to happen in education, which is happening now. So I want a liberal policy by the government. Both central government and the state government should invest more money in higher education, particularly in professional education, and also allow private to come up. Now we are restricting only to trusts and societies. We should allow even companies also to start. Finally, the proof of eating in the pudding. The pudding is in the eating. And uh, I want a transparent, very good accreditation team to go around 
and tell the public, inform the public about the quality of education any university offers. If there is a competition, ultimately only those who do well will survive, others will die on their own. The government need not come with punishments like three years imprisonment, two years imprisonment, one crore fine, etc. These are all in the pending bills. I would very much request the government not to hand over the educational institution to police stations. If all the pending bills are passed, we will not be going to AICT, UGC, or Medical Council of India. We will be visiting all the police stations in the country. This is the kind of thing which we want to avoid, and we have very good models all over the world. Take, for example, Europe. How was Europe was overtaken by U.S.? Because of competition between the private and the public. That is how U.S. became the leader instead of Europe. That's what can India can offer. India has the very good potential to become a world leader in education. And I would very much like more investment has to take place. And we have to attain excellence through competition. And as I told you, there is so much disparity among states and states. This has to be taken care of. And the most important challenge which is facing is the shortage of faculty. We are not doing anything now because those who are in teaching profession, those who do not get anywhere else, they come for teaching profession except 10 or 20 percent. I would very much like the government to evolve a scheme whereby we have to attract the best of people to teaching profession. My request to government is that the income tax there should be a limit for the professors, for the teaching profession. It is offered in some countries. The maximum can be either to 5% or 10%, so that those who are in outside, outside the country or outside the teaching field, they may come back for teaching, and we will solve the problem of teacher shortage, which is around 30 to 40%, even beyond 40%. And uh, another important thing is we have to internationalize our education. At present, one is our infrastructure is not good. I see some of the schools in U.S. and Western countries, they are far better than our universities. So infrastructure is very much required. The curriculum, we have no autonomy as such. All the affiliated colleges are like tutorial colleges. They cannot do anything on their own. We must give enough autonomy to the educational institutions. The tenth plan spoke about at least 10% of the colleges should be given autonomous status. If it is so, 3,500 colleges should be autonomous in the country. There are only 300 institutions out of which half of are in Tamil Nadu. So we have to go a long way in giving autonomy to the educational institution, and we have to switch over from this affiliated system to the university system like all over India. Except India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, this affiliating system is not there anywhere in the world. It is high time we want to improve quality we have to move to the university system, and the university should be respected, both government as well as private. People should not think that they sit in Delhi and control everything in Delhi, everything in India. I would very much like them to be liberal, but ultimately the, they will be judged by the parents and students. Competition will determine the existence of an institution. Thank you.